um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I will do a different talk, I think, than the other people because I'm here. It's not more about software; it's more about hardware in this sense. Although it will be, I think, soon an ecosystem of software around these machines. Um, well, I want to start straightforward. I mean, yesterday we visited the, the Fab Labs uh, here in in Singapore, and well, I've been in many Fab Labs in the world. And I think there is a misunderstanding what they should fabricate and what the disaggregation is. Um, first, uh, um, I will explain that the Fab Labs is a vision of engineers and architects from MIT, and they forgot certain machines that they should be in the Fab Labs, but they are not. And, and Fab Lab has a, a kind of a list of machines that they recommend to put in the Fab Lab. Um, well, Fab Lab is a registered name by MIT. And, but we want to advocate that they should also include, for example, the knitting machines, which is a, also a digital fabrication system, that they should be in all the um, fab, fab labs or, or maker spaces. I will go really fast to the history. Well, the, the, the knitting is a craft that is ancient, means, um, well, it's before Christ, um, and then the, the first uh, machines that is are more than 100 years old. And this one is a circular knitting machine. You will see because we, we did the first open source circular knitting machine uh, done with 3D printing. It's, it's for knitting socks. And I will tell you that um, it was a key factor on, on the, the first world war um, for winning one side because the socks and the knitting were, was a key factor on the soldiers. Means it was in that time was um, uh, like leading technology on the military side as well. Um, well, this was the first uh, knitting machine that was at home, and it was more than 100 years old. And this was the what is called now having the factory at home that is, is now with the 3D printings uh, in the mouth of many people. They were already. It's, it's not a term new. Um, well, in the in the knitting machines, there is. Um, a key machine that many people had used, uh, and is the Brother. And Brother, um, well, everyone, many people know the, the company Brother. Brother had a division, very big, uh, in certain time that they were doing knitting machines. And, and well, the knitting machines, you can see the evolution. Actually, the, the very early age, they incorporate electronics because the, the knitting factories and the knitting were very advanced on, on incorporating all the technology and the punch car, one of the first applications industrially was the knitting machines, as well as the, the incorporation of electronics. Um, in the 70s, it, they appeared the first electronic knitting machine. And in the 80s, they were already at home because these are home knitting machines. Well, I, I almost already explained well the, the, the Fab Labs it is, um, is one department of MIT, uh, directed by Neil Geisinfer. It's basically these bit and atoms and, and transform from a, a digital file to a physical form in an analog way. Um, this is, uh, for anyone that didn't see a knitting machine, this is how it looks uh, a brother. And, and well, it, it's, quite, it's quite good. They have like the digital ones, they have 200 stitches, and you can make a pattern with these 200 stitches. and and I will explain that one stitch is one pixel, it means it, you, can, you can have a lot of resolution. Um, well, these machines like Brother, uh, they're still now in use for many people. There is a, a, a very active second market of, of these machines, although Brother didn't explain what you can see from the releases of the machines that it died in, in the 90s. Didn't, they closed the division. But they, before they closed the division, they sell uh, thousands of thousands of machines. Maybe what now is popular, the 3D printing, at the moment that is now, is the moment when it, it closed the, 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 um, the knitting machines. I mean, there were a lot of knitting machines, especially, for example, in the UK at home. And, and there's still a, a market of floppies that actually are, it's not a normal floppy, it's a proprietary floppy system uh, with the patterns that they, they've been sell. And we, well, I will explain that, uh, well, this is already explained. It is the first manufacturer at home. Um, it's very, it's very old. The, the, the combination of knitting and, and technology. Well, there were some. We, we found some codes already for 
the the C C sixty four like for making parametric designs in in the knitting, and even um, this was released in in, in the two thousand at uh, twelve that the the NES they they they, they develop um, an accessory of knitting machine for their um, consoles, but it was only shown in one in one fair, but never released to public. How we start to knit it? Well, we we saw Meg uh, Meg magazine Becky Stern. He published um, a reverse engineer of the of the brother. And, and we saw this and we were very inspired. Like Barbara and I, we do our projects and we always work with technology. And when we saw this, we said, okay, we have an idea, we will do one art project that, that will be called Spam Poetry and we will recycle a Spam and make knitted form pieces. But we had a bad luck because he said, yeah, this works in all the brothers. And, and it was not true, basically. There was the model of US that has a different memory system that the Europe one means when we start to buy Europe machines uh, the fact didn't work and then at the beginning I, I looked at the memory system and I understand well basically then we open we see the electronics then we found um, one, one American Fabian and, and Travis that basically they are in, in living in Berlin that they, they post this, the, the schematics of the buttons and how we, we hack the machine at the beginning with Arduino, we press all the, all the keys because we had the map and then we, we had the array of the, of the keys and that's how we did. It was a bit shifting thing that you, you, you can see more or less here in, in the schematics. And that's the first hack that we did. But then because we opened the electronics, we also see how not very complex was the electronics. And then we decided to remove the brain and to start to do uh, a PCB to control these machines. We did the software, um, a UI software for entering and, and, and controlling the machine. And this is the PCB that, that we release. It's a PCB that basically controls the actuators and the sensors from the, the brother knitting machine. And well, inspired several things, several people, and now there is uh, at least three other projects that does the same thing. And, and it, the, the reality is that many people are still using the brother knitting machines. And, and why we did this is because also the sometimes uh, the electronics get born and, and then the mechanics doesn't broke that, that easy and there is some replacement of needles and certain parts means you still can use uh, these old machines. But well, in certain point we, we decide that we like brother but um, it's an obsolete machine. You cannot, uh, the, the and after all these hacks, the prices in the second hand start to go up and, and when we start to see the machines they were 300 and now when you go to eBay they don't never go down of 1000 euros means there had been an impact of this of this shelf with the price of the machines um, and well we we got like the we, we got the idea that it would be good to make a, a fully open source knitting machine um, and well before us, uh, Gerard, which is a friend of us, he released Open Knit, which is the first knitting uh, open knitting machine, which is a flat one. And recently, in December, we, we released uh, uh, the second um, open source knitting machine, but it's the first circular one, because the other is flat. And, and this is uh, circular knitting. It's basically... Um, for doing tubes and it's controlled with Arduino. And it's all done with um, 3D printed. It's already uh, in, in we make it's a makerspace in Milano, they already did one copy of it and it's fully functional. And this is the, the opening from Gerard. Basically, um, we think that uh, this area is, is the new 3D printing, let's say. It's like if the 3D printing had boomed some years ago, now the knitting machines, like it's obvious that there will be, there is a lot of uh, demand because we saw when we, we put some, some, something about our, one of our projects, like there is knitters, there is industry contacting us, and the reality is that 
Silver Ring is like a competitor of um, of Brother, still producing these hand knitting machines, but they never was good, and the people don't like, and they are the only one. And then there is the industrial ones, which is monopolized by two companies: one German store and one uh, Japanese Semaseki, and then some Chinese that. In Europe, at least, the, the, the manufacturers they don't trust, but they are super expensive. They are like 80,000, and there is nothing be below, only silver grid, which don't have a good supply. And, and now, there is this option that you can do yourself, the knitting <coughs> machines. And, well, it has been a lot of good reception. Um, there is some comments that they're, they're very nice that basically some people say, well, now I have the excuse to buy a, 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 a 3D printer. I can convince my wife. That's how some people say. Well, that's the general schematic. Um, just to explain how the ecosystems can grow with knitting machines. Like in, in London, unfortunately it's not open source, but uh, a group of people, they have a company that they just start, like uh, some some months ago, uh, that basically they, they hack the stall knitting machine that is industrial one, and they put it in a shop, and they produce right in the shop the knitting work. And well, this is a, that's another thing, that they, this industry um, machines is unbelievable, that they still are in the 80s. Like floppies, they still are in factories. Like, and this I know from first view because I am, I, was, I saw in the news when I was doing Mythic that um, Desigual, I don't know if you know this company, it's, it's a brand in Spain. They, they moved the production from China to, to Barcelona again. And then I went to visit the company who manufactured. And they still use floppy to, to bring the, um, the patterns of, to, uh, to the same asekis. And the reality is that, yeah, the same asekis, they make the... the the sweaters without touching any any worker the, the machine. But the system is still from the eighties. And because these industrial companies they don't invest so much like here like people do in, in, in tech. They just are in their system, their closed source systems and they charge for every little update that they do. Uh, well choosing wire magazine um, they make this article and they basically was pointing out this uh, this thing I'm telling that they they think that the the knitting machines will be the new the new boost on the on the maker movement. Oh, well, all this why is important? Well, because we can democratize the, the production of the things and we can produce our own machines and democratize the production. Okay. Thank you.